Now, few issues are more contentious than those surrounding gender, identity and protecting people's safety. Currently, to legally change gender in the UK, you need to have a gender recognition certificate. That requires two medical reports and evidence that the person has lived in their acquired gender for at least two years. They also have to confirm that they will continue to live in that new gender until they die. But tomorrow, a consultation comes to an end on plans that could allow transgender people to self-identify without the need for those lengthy checks. But there are those who have deep-rooted concerns. It could have unintended consequences. Our social affairs correspondent, Polly Evans, has been speaking to one woman from Kent who escaped a violent relationship and now lives in a refuge where men aren't allowed. Women's refuges provide homes for vulnerable families, those fleeing violence and sexual abuse. One resident has told us how frightened she feels for herself and her child. When we left home, we were both, my son and I, so traumatised that we couldn't be in a space with men. In and out of women's refuges for three years, she worries that changes to the law will ultimately lead to more male-bodied trans women being allowed in. To object or to question is bigoted, it's unreasonable and it's unkind. My view is that it's unkind to women and girls and children to tell them that they have to forego their comfort, their emotional safety and physical safety because somebody else tells them they feel a certain way. The proposal is to change something called the Gender Recognition Act so that transgender people can self-identify as their acquired gender without the previous medical checks. Some women's groups, though, fear that that would mean that the legal status of female, which has protections in law, would effectively be opened up to include anyone who signs a declaration and that that would undermine protected spaces for women. I think the important thing that services want support with is making sure that they're actually providing services to every single person who needs it. And that will include trans people. We know that a quarter of trans people in the last year from Stonewall's research have experienced um, domestic violence within an intimate partner relationship. And I think that that's something that those services really want to support. For equality and human rights campaigner Sophie Cook, any fears are overblown. She believes that self-identification will simply allow transgender people wider acceptance in society. Trans people are disproportionately likely to be affected with mental health issues. That's not because they're trans, that's because of the bigotry and the prejudice that they face in everyday life. When you've got people that are already in a vulnerable position being asked to justify their identity, um, they, then it puts so much more pressure on them. No one else in society has to justify who they are. No one asks anyone else to prove who they are. And, and for me, that's the, that's the big issue. It's a big human rights issue. But this is a debate that's been marked by tension. Some academics claim they've been silenced on the issue of self-ID, and they say vulnerable women are being ignored. The thing is, it's not just a safeguarding issue for um, women in hostels and refuges. It's an issue of their, their um, recovery. We're not taking their feelings seriously. We're not thinking about them. The government does not seem to be thinking about them. No women's groups were consulted in the original trans inquiry, and that's absolutely scandalous, because there's two sets of interests here, not just one. The government says that this consultation is a significant step in its work to advance LGBT equality. Critics argue that its impact on other vulnerable groups hasn't been fully considered. Uh, well, Polly is in Lewis for us now. And Polly, there's some really emotive and complex issues at play here. The local MP from Lewis has been talking about this in Westminster this week. That's right, sorry uh, about the motorbike just going past. Maria Caulfield met with uh, women's groups in Westminster earlier this week. Afterwards, she said that she felt that women's voices hadn't been properly heard during the inquiry into self-identification and that proper consideration hadn't been given to the impact on women's spaces of allowing people to self-identify without those medical checks uh, and balances. Uh, meanwhile, Stonewall have said that these are two separate pieces of legislation 
legislation. So the Gender Recognition Act changes that would allow self-identification will not have an impact on the Equality Act, which protects single-sex spaces for women. That is their view. Maria Caulfield has caused for a, called for a pause in this consultation, uh, but that doesn't look likely to happen. It is due to end at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Okay, Polly, thank you.